This is a podcast from the Nuffield Department of Medicine. Professor Nick White talks about the future of artemisinin and other drug therapies for malaria. Good afternoon, Nick. Good afternoon. What challenges does malaria pose in rural Southeast Asia? Well, malaria is the most important parasitic disease of, of man. And most of the deaths, and there, we estimate that there are some 2,000 deaths every day from malaria, occur in Africa, and they occur in children. But the parasites, which carry drug resistance genes, which uh, defeat the anti-malarial drugs we have, have historically emerged from Southeast Asia. Not once, not twice, but now three times. So Southeast Asia is where the resistance problems that undermine our global malaria control efforts come from. So Southeast Asia is very important, although it doesn't have such a large burden of disease. And is artemisinin therapy the way forward? Artemisinin therapy is definitely the way forward. Artemisinins, which are plant-derived compound, originally from the Chinese Materia Medica, turn out to be the most uh, highly effective drugs uh, for the treatment of malaria, the best drugs we've ever had. And after quite a lot of research and quite some political wrangling uh, in, in the mid-2000s, they have now become established as the treatment of choice for malaria throughout the world. So for uncomplicated falciparum malaria, and increasingly for the other malarias, uh, artemisinin combination treatments are the first-line treatment. So we use a combination of artemisinins and another drug. Same strategy that we have, for, uh, with the same basis for this uh, is underlies the treatment of tuberculosis or and HIV and many cancers, combining drugs together to try and slow the emergence of resistance. And then in severe malaria, we've shown in, in the largest ever trials conducted both in Asia and in Africa that art artesunate, which is one of the artemisinin derivatives, is simply the best uh, treatment for severe malaria, substantially reducing the mortality by up to a third. So they are, in short, by far the best drugs for the treatment of malaria. And what about the prospect for the development of other drugs? I think uh, the prospects for new drugs ha have, are better than they have been for really the last three decades. It's been quite difficult to produce new, an new anti-infective drugs at all. And it's not been, we've not been very productive in the last few decades for malaria. But in just the last five years, some really promising compounds have entered early uh, clinical development. Still too early to say what their role will be, but they're certainly very promising. So I think it's better now than it has been for in my, in my professional lifetime. And what are the most important lines of research that have developed in this field over the past five or ten years? I think the important research has been to uh, get these drugs into practice in the correct doses. So for uncomplicated malaria, to find the best combination treatments and to also find the best ways of assessing them. So there's been, there been a lot of development in the whole field of clinical trials, how the drugs are assessed in, 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 the rural, in rural areas, how we can measure drugs in difficult places and so forth. So getting, uh, translating uh, theoretical pharmacology, which is the study of drugs, into practice, and through that getting the right drug regimens. Same with severe malaria. So if you look at the treatment of malaria today, uh, it's very different to that, to that 10 years ago even. And the, and the important thing is it now has a sound evidence base. In the past, we used the, de the way we developed drugs was a little bit hit and miss, and I think it's a lot better now. Why does your line of research matter? Why should we put money into it? Well, malaria being the most important parasitic disease of humans has a huge humanitarian impact. So it, it affects both the quality of life and, and, of course, life expectancy, and it has enormous economic impact on developing countries. Some have said that negative growth in Africa, negative economic growth, can be ascribed to malaria itself. So clearly there's a very strong argument for getting, getting malaria under control and even trying to eliminate it, which is what we are now trying to do, at least in the Southeast Asian region. So I think it makes a lot of sense to attack this, because I think we can make substantial advances, and we have. And I'm actually reasonably optimistic that this can continue, despite the threat of resistance. And finally, how does your research fit into translational medicine within the department? Well, we actually do research that makes a real difference to the practice of medicine. Uh, 
by doing uh, investigations, clinical investigations and laboratory investigations, we've developed better treatments and then we have deployed them, shown that they are uh, better than the previous treatments and safe and these, this has been translated into policy and importantly I into practice. So it really does go all the way from clinical investigation through to the, uh, the average treatment of malaria in the rural tropics. Thank you, Nick. Thank you.